So we all know that learning anatomy can be hard, but also pretty boring at times. So would you like some really cool and simple mnemonics to make life easier? If so, you've come to the right place. Let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So today we're gonna to take you through some simple lower limb anatomy mnemonics. We're gonna look at the foot and ankle, the knee, and the hip to make life a lot easier for you. And in that case, there's only one place to start, and that is our 3D anatomy model. So guys, the first mnemonic for us to share with you is tiger cubs need milk. But remember, there's a C instead of the K at the end. Now this one is to help you remember the key tarsal bones, and there are seven of these located in the posterior region of the foot. So let's go through this one. So T for tiger also stands for talus. Now the talus bone is a really important one that connects the foot to the leg forming the ankle joint. It articulates with the tibia and fibula bones in order to create that ankle joint, which of course is really important for plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. Now C stands for cubs and also calcaneus. So this is also commonly known as our heel bone and it's an incredibly strong bone in the body. Of course it's responsible for supporting our body weight and provides a key attachment point for the Achilles tendon or the calcaneal tendon which will house muscles such as the gastrocnemius and soleus. Next we have N for need but also for navicular. Now the navicular bone is one of the most interesting bones in the foot. It's shaped like a boat, as the name navicular may suggest, and it's located on the medial side of the foot. It articulates with the talus as well as the three key cuneiform bones, and it plays a vital role in maintaining the arch of the foot during walking and mobility. So milk. M-I-L-C instead of a K. So the M stands for the medial cuneiform bone. This is the first of three wedge-shaped bones that are situated between the navicular and the metatarsal bones. And with the medial cuneiform, the key part of this is that it primarily articulates with the first metatarsal of the foot and it performs a key role in helping to maintain the arch of the foot. Next, I, we have the intermediate cuneiform, and we can see here that this is the second of the three cuneiforms, and it's located between the medial, which we've just looked at, and the lateral cuneiforms. Now, this one clearly lines up with and articulates with the second metatarsal of the foot, and it also contributes to the arch of the foot too. So the L stands for the lateral cuneiform. We saw this just a second ago, and this articulates with the third metatarsal of the foot. Like the other cuneiforms, it also has a role in maintaining the arch of the foot. And then we have that C, which stands for cuboid. This is a, a cube-shaped bone, as the name would suggest, and it's situated on the lateral side of the foot, as you can see. And it articulates with the fourth and the fifth metatarsal bones, as well as the calcaneus. And as you can imagine, it also has a role in providing stability and support to the foot. So there you go, tiger cubs need milk. You can remember tiger cubs need for the talus, the calcaneus and the navicular bone. And then that second row of bones, you can remember milk. Remember there's a C instead of a K and you can see this all laid out for the screen in front of you. So next, let's give you something to help you remember the key structures for the tarsal tunnel. So here we're gonna use the mnemonic Tom, Dick, and Very Nervous Harry, so that we can help remember some of the key structures that pass through the tarsal tunnel. So the tarsal tunnel is a narrow passage located on the medial side of the ankle. The roof of this tunnel is formed by the flexor retinaculum, as you can see on the medial side of the foot, and we have a series of soft tissue structures that pass through it. So hopefully this catchy phrase will help you remember what those are. So Tom, Dick and Very Nervous Harry. The T for Tom also stands for the tibialis posterior tendon. This is a key muscle in helping maintain the arch of the foot. And as you can see, clearly located on the medial side of the foot here. The D stands for Dick 
as well as the flexor digitorum longus tendon. This is responsible for flexing the four lesser toes and is also involved in ankle movement too. The AND stands for artery and in fact it's the tibial artery that we're looking at here. Naturally, this artery is going to play a vital role in supplying blood to some of the key muscles of the foot and the posterior compartment of the leg as a whole. Then we have V for very, which also stands for vein. And in particular, we're talking about the tibial vein. Naturally, this is the opposite of the tibial artery in many ways and helps draw blood back up to the rest of the body. N stands for nervous, but also stands for nerve, and in particular, the tibial nerve. Now, this main nerve passes through the tarsal tunnel, and then it goes on to supply sensation to the plantar surface of the foot, and also controlling important muscles there too. And then we have Harry, and that H also stands for hallucis, because it's for the flexor hallucis longus tendon. So this one is responsible for flexing the big toe, and as you can imagine, it's also involved in balance and propulsing the foot forward during running and walking. So there you go. It's really important to know these different structures because when it comes to conditions such as tarsal tunnel syndrome, we want to try and work out if it is indeed the tibial nerve which is impacted that might be causing our patient's symptoms. So guys, let's dive into the knee. And the mnemonic that we'd like to give you first is SGT, which is sometimes used to abbreviate the word sergeant for working in the military. So why do we need to remember SGT? Well, it's to help us remember the key three muscles that insert into the pizanserine region. As you can see, the pizanserine region is located on the proximal medial side of the tibia. And sometimes you'll find that patients present with pain swooping into this region. And it therefore may be that it's one of these three key tendons which are irritated. So SGT, the S stands for the sartorius muscle. So the sartorius muscle is a long and slender muscle that extends down from the anterior portion of the thigh. It plays a key role in both hip and knee flexion, so a good one to remember. Now the G stands for the gracilis muscle. This is also another long and slender muscle, and it's found on the more medial side rather than the anterior side of the thigh. This contributes to knee flexion, but also, and perhaps more principally, adduction of the hip. Then the T stands for semi tendinosis and you'll be familiar that one of the hamstring muscles is the semitendinosis muscle therefore it's mainly located on the posterior medial side of the thigh and as you can imagine with the hamstring muscles it's involved in hip extension and knee flexion too so guys the next mnemonic at the knee is lamp and lamp L-A-M-P, is used so that we can try and remember the four key primary ligaments of the knee joint so, each of those letters, L-A-M-P, corresponds to the first letter of one of these key ligaments. So let's go through it. So L stands for lateral collateral ligament. Clearly, this joins from the femur or thigh bone to the fibula and is located on the lateral side of the knee. Its main role is to prevent excessive varus forces placed upon the knee joint. Next is a, which stands for anterior cruciate ligament, one of the most commonly injured ligaments at the knee. This connects from the posterolateral femur to the anterior tibia on the tibial plateau. And its main role is to prevent excessive anterior translation of the tibia upon the femur. Next is M, which is for the medial collateral ligament. As you can see, this is located on the medial side of the knee, connecting the medial femur to the medial tibia. And its main role is to prevent excessive valgus forces placed on the knee joint. And then finally, we have P, which is for the posterior cruciate ligament. 
So the PCL is located at the postero central aspect of the knee and forms one of the other cruciate ligaments alongside the anterior cruciate ligament. So this connects the femur to the tibia posteriorly and its main role is to prevent excessive posterior translation of the tibia upon the femur. So there you go. L-A-M-P lamp and once again hopefully this helps you remember the four primary ligaments of the knee joint. So next let's dive into the hip and we're going to start with a mnemonic that is incredibly helpful at remembering the key muscles that adduct the hip joint and that is three ducks pecking grass. So three ducks this represents the three adductor muscles of the medial thigh. The first of those is adductor magnus, which, as you can imagine, is the largest of those muscles. It has a role in both hip adduction, as well as a little bit of hip extension, and a little bit of hip internal rotation. So a very powerful muscle. We also have adductor longus. This muscle naturally adducts the hip, but also has a little bit of a role in hip flexion too. It also assists with medial rotation as well. And then the final duck, the smallest of the three, is adductor brevis. This is located deep to the adductor longus muscle and further assists in hip adduction. So P for pecking, pecking grass, and that is the pectineus muscle. This is also considered one of the adductor muscles as well as the grass muscle, which is gracilis. So there you go. Three ducks pecking grass, adductor magnus, adductor longus, and adductor brevis, pecking pectineus, and grass gracilis. And then finally, and quite possibly my favourite, we have play it like Ronaldo, Sue. So from that play it like Ronaldo, Sue, we're going to remember the P, the I, the R, and the S to remember the key muscles that help in flexion of the hip joint. So the P stands for play, but also stands for psoas. So the psoas muscle is a really deep one. As you can see, it runs from the lumbar spine down to the anterior hip and is one of the most major hip flexors. The I stands for it, but also stands for iliacus. And as you can see, the iliacus muscle runs from the superior ilium down to the anterior hip. R stands for Ronaldo, but also stands for the rectus femoris muscle. This is one of the quadriceps muscles located in the anterior thigh. It also has a key role in knee extension, but as we said, it also has a secondary role in hip flexion too. And then finally, we have the SU, which stands for sartorius. And the sartorius muscle also has a role in knee flexion, and it's located in the anterior thigh as you can see. So there you go. Play it like Ronaldo, Sue. I do genuinely think that remembering the hip flexor muscles is quite a challenging one. So hopefully this can help you remember psoas, iliacus, rectus femoris and sartorius. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please support us by smashing that like button. Remember, we're also going to bring loads of brilliant anatomy content to our Instagram account at Clinical Physio. And there's even more brilliant resources for physios and fitness fanatics at clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.